Hello friends, welcome to engineering tutorial. So we'll continue our discussion related to optoelectronics devices and systems. So in this video, uh, as I said, we'll be discussing about the uh, external or indirect methods of light modulation. So as we know in the optoelectronic communication system, light is the main component, the carrier component of the data. So, in order for the data or information to be transmitted from the sender to the receiver, some parameters of the light wave or the light signal, it has to be changed. Okay, so it can be the amplitude, it can be the frequency, it can be the phase. And we are only concerned with the electric component, okay, the electric field vector of the light wave. So here uh, the modulation, the process of modulation such parameters amplitude, frequency, phase or the polarization status that is changed. So in this video we will be discussing about the first method which is the modulation by birefringence or double refraction. So if you know we have already discussed about the uh, phenomena of double refraction. So double refraction it happens in a bifringent crystal material. Okay and the important characteristic of that crystal material is that it is anisotropic in nature. Okay it is anisotropic in nature. So there are two types of materials isotropic and anisotropic. Isotropic materials are those in which the crystal properties such as conductivity, refractive index, everything, the important properties they are uniform, they are the same in all directions. But in anisotropic materials the properties are different in different directions. Why? Because of irregular crystal arrangement, arrangement of atoms. Okay, the arrangement of atoms is non-uniform. It is different in different directions. Whereas in isotropic crystals, it is the same. A well-defined pattern in the arrangement of atoms exists. That's why the properties of isotropic crystals, they are the same, uniform in all directions. In anisotropic, it is different in different directions because of irregular arrangement of atoms in different directions. So the main uh, thing which we are concerned here is that for anisotropic crystals, the refractive index is different in different directions. So as refractive index is different in different directions, the velocity of the light wave focused towards a uh, biofringent crystal or a doubly refracting crystal, it will be different in different directions. So the same thing happens. What happens is that when a light wave is incident on a biofringent uh, crystal, okay, so it can be potassium, dihydrogate, phosphate or calcite crystal, it splits into two rays, okay, it splits into two rays because the region through which the light signal passes because of different refractive index in different directions, one suffers refraction while the other, uh, uh, the other ray it does not, it splits into two parts. And the crystal material, it offers two refractive indices for each of these two rays. The refractive index for the O ray that is called as N0 or eta 0 and for E ray, it is eta subscript E, two refractive index, okay, eta 0 and eta E. So the crystal material, it offers two effective refractive indices okay for the ordinary ray it offers refractive index eta 0 and for the extraordinary ray it offers refractive index eta e so as a result because of the two 
a different refractive index offered by the crystal material the velocity of both the rays they are different for the ordinary ray it is c by eta 0 and for the extraordinary ray it is c by eta e where c is the velocity of light in uh, air okay so because of that one of the light rays it passes straight without any deviation while the other one it suffers refraction at both the interfaces and emerges out in the same direction slightly shifted okay so this introduces a phase shift between the ores now if you remember modulation simply involves changing one of the following parameters amplitude frequency phase so because of this uh, variation of refractive index at different positions in the crystal the velocity of the ray the two components of the light ray it is different in different directions and that produces the phase shift okay this e ray it gets the refractive index eta e and this o ray it gets the refractive index eta o as a result it travels with velocity ve it travels with velocity v0 as they travel with different velocities they cover different distances and they produce there is a phase shift between the o ray and the e ray and that phase difference between the o ray and the e ray is given by this the phase difference between the o ray and the e ray okay so that phase difference is 2 pi by lambda eta 0 minus eta e into d where d is the thickness of the crystal okay it is the thickness of the crystal so this is the whole uh, phase difference that is introduced between the o ray and the e ray so if you see the overall phase shift it depends on the following factors first is the wavelength of light okay the light source from the light source that then the refractive index the principal refractive index offered by the doubly refracting crystal for o ray and the principal refractive index offered by the crystal for the e ray extraordinary ray and ordinary ray eta 0 and eta i then another factor which plays a role is the thickness of the crystal okay the thickness of the crystal so here the parameter which is under our control from the source side we can control the wavelength and we can control the crystal thickness by slicing it up according to our choice and also we can control the uh, composition of the crystal by the type of crystal that we use okay uh, depending on that we can also control the refractive index the two principal refractive indices and accordingly we can change the phase shift because we want that this phase shift this change in phase shift of the two rays it carries the information so we can control from the source side the wavelength we can control the thickness of the crystal by uh, choosing appropriate thickness of the crystal and different types of crystal materials doubly refracting crystal materials they are of different types so by choosing an appropriate crystal we can also control the two principal refractive indices so by changing any one of these parameters these four parameters we can control the change in phase shift okay so there are other important uh, things to consider here first is the optic axis so the optic axis is basically a line which bisects any of the two opposite blunt corners of the crystal making equal angles with each of these you know uh, faces or these vertices and the important property of this optic axis is that when a light wave passes parallel to this optic axis it does not suffer any deviation okay and uh, accordingly depending on the optic axis 
the W refracting crystals they can be divided into two categories uniaxial and bi biaxial. So the uniaxial crystals are those in which there is only one optical axis and two principal refractive indices which is this case. This is a uniaxial crystal KDP or calcite potassium dihydrogen phosphate or calcite it is a uniaxial crystal because it has one optic axis only one optic axis and two principal refractive indices that is eta 0 eta e for ordinary ray for extraordinary. The biaxial crystals are those which require two optical axis okay and three principal refractive indices for overall description of the crystal properties. So that we are not interested here here we are only interested in the uniaxial crystal. So the phenomena of double refraction it depends on certain factors. First is whether the incoming light which is focused on the W refracting crystal it is polarized or unpolarized. Okay. So unpolarized light means the electric vectors are randomly oriented in different directions and Polarized means if it is passed through a polarizer, whether it is polarized by reflection, refraction or any other process, if the electric vectors are confined to a particular direction or plane, then uh, that is polarized. So first is this. Another one is the angle of incidence. That is at what angle the light it uh, makes contact with the crystal interface. Okay. The interface which separates the crystal material and the medium in which the light is initially traveling. Okay, that is the basic law of refraction. Then is the orientation or the direction of the optical axis. Okay, again it depends whether it is a uniaxial type doubly refracting birefringent crystal or a biaxial type. Uniaxial means one up optical axis, biaxial means two optical axis. So again, uh, double refraction it depends on the direction of the optical axis. So optical axis definition, joining any two opposite blunt corners of the crystal material so that it makes equal angles, okay? It makes equal angles with each of these three vertices, okay? Three faces of the crystal. So that is uh, the optical axis. So the double refraction phenomena it depends on these three factors polarization state of the incoming light whether it is unpolarized or polarized in what direction horizontal vertical whatever then the angle of incidence of the light and the type of crystal uniaxial biaxial which brings the optical axis into play the direction of the optical axis and another important thing is that when the light it suffers double refraction it gets split into two components ordinary ray extraordinary ray which are phase shifted the polarization status of uh, uh, the two components it also gets changed first is that the initial the light uh, no the light wave from the source it is unpolarized in nature okay it is unpolarized in nature so the electric vectors that they are in random directions they are oriented in random directions but after suffering double refraction the electric vectors they get you know confined in one particular direction so it can be in a direction suppose you are considering this screen as the plane here the refractive indices they are in the plane of this screen okay and in another case the electric vectors they are perpendicular to this to the plane of the screen okay so there are two conditions in first condition the electric vectors they will be they will be aligned in the plane of the screen or the plane of the paper if you are drawing it on a paper and in another case it will be perpendicular to the plane of the paper or perpendicular to the screen okay so this is the e ray and this is the o ray with the electric vectors like that so there are two things that uh, which happen first is the two components they get phase shifted okay and uh, another thing the polarization 
status of the two rays that also changes initially it is unpolarized electric vectors and they are oriented in random directions but after passing through the doubly refracting crystal the electric vectors they are concentrated only in one plane either perpendicular or parallel to the plane of the screen or paper if you want to visualize it but the important thing which we are interested in from the mod modulation point of view is the phase difference between the o ray and the e ray okay and that is dependent on the wavelength okay the wavelength which is controlled from the source side then the refractive the two principal refractive indices for the o ray and the e ray which depends on the type of crystal which we are using okay it whether it is uniaxial biaxial whatever it is and another thing which is the thickness of the crystal okay this thickness of the crystal d that we can also control by slicing it uh, through appropriate techniques we can decide what is what will be the thickness of the crystal so by altering any of these four parameters we can control the phase difference or the phase shift and that gives us the desired modulation okay this parameter okay so this is the modulation of light by the process of double refraction using a birefringent crystal okay doubly refracting crystal okay so we have discussed about this then we'll be discussing about the other uh, methods in the upcoming video so i hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to engineering science and technology have a great day thank you very much